We have another great question coming in today from Erica, and she's wanting to know something that I have a feeling a lot of you want to know. When it comes to picking paint colors, how do you decide? But not just paint colors, not just any paint colors, white. How on earth, when there are a million shades of white, how do you choose which is the best white for you? We're going to break it all down, and I'm going to give you my top two in today's episode. Enjoy today's show. It's Quick Tip Tuesday. You have questions, I have answers, and I am so glad to be answering them for you today. If you have a question that you want answered on the show, pop into my DMs on Instagram at Fig and Farm. Send me an email at figandfarmathome at gmail.com or join the Facebook group and ask there. bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. Let's hop to it. Let's answer your question. And if you find value in this, I'm sure someone else will too. So make sure you share with a friend. You guys are so good at bringing me great questions. Questions that are not only pertinent to you, but I think ones that so many of us have. I know that I had this exact same question years ago. How do you choose the right white? How do you choose a white that is right for your home and your room? And do I, do I have favorites? The short answer, I always have a short answer is yes, I do have favorites. I do have go-tos and standards, but it doesn't mean that I always choose those when I'm working with a client. Sometimes I change a little bit, but in my own home, definitely. I, in fact, in my own home, I have a number one go-to, but we're going to break it down a little bit more today so that you can understand how to choose your top white because it is just going to look different in each person's home. So we're going to talk about that in answering Erica's question. Do you have a favorite white color? So, all right, let's get our thinking caps on today because I'm going to go just a little sciencey. Can we do that for a second? You know, picking paint is, it is an art and it is a science. And there are definitely some people who can immediately pick out a color palette and they are confident with that color palette and they might even have an idea of what the different uh, shades of light that are coming into their home is going to how it's going to react with the paint that they're choosing. Some people just have that natural gifting and some people just don't. And that's okay. So we're going to put on our thinking caps today and we're going to just give you a quick cliff notes version of how you can choose and how you can know when it's time to choose paint for you, how to choose it. Okay. So the one thing I want you to think about is that paint, well, any color in general tends to have an undertone and an undertone is generally going to be warm or it is going to be cool. Now, if you think about the color wheel, We're going sciencey, aren't we? (laughs) If you think about the color wheel, warm undertones are going to have hints of reds and oranges and yellows. Just think about the warmth. Think about fall, honestly. The palette of fall is very warm. And so a paint will have generally a warm undertone or it will have a cool undertone. So if we know that reds and oranges and yellows, those are going to be the warmth, the opposite is going to be the cools blues and purples, things like that. So if you think about white in general, white is going to have either a warm undertone or a cool undertone. And generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, a warm undertone is going to sometimes present itself a little bit more yellow, so a little bit creamier. And a, a cool undertone with white can present itself a little bit more blue. Okay, so now how do we know? How do we know? Have you ever gone to the paint store and you've picked out the perfect shade of white? You thought, oh, this is so good. And then you grab another couple whites and you put them all together and you think, oh, that one that I grabbed at the very beginning, that one that I thought was absolutely perfect actually now looks green or it looks blue or it looks really yellow and not just a little bit, but it kind of pulls out that undertone and makes it more vibrant. That's what I'm talking about when I say undertone. So you do need to be really, really aware of undertones in the paint colors. And one thing that you can do is you can grab some paint samples, the ones that you think might work, come home and grab a piece of paper, um, a typing paper, and put those next to a neutral color, that neutral white put it next to it and see what it's pulling out. Is it warm or is it cool? 
And I want you to actually separate those into two piles. So you've got your warms in one pile and you've got your blues in another pile. And then it's time to start looking around your room. What color palette do you have in your room? Do you tend to decorate with more warm tones or do you tend to decorate with more cool tones? If you tend to decorate with more reds and oranges and burnt oranges and clays and terracottas, you're probably going to want to choose a white that has a little bit more of a warm undertone. If you choose to decorate with blues and greens and purples and things like that, then you're probably going to want to have a cooler undertone. They're going to complement each other a little bit better. Okay, now we're not quite done yet. <laughs> So once you've decided, do I decorate with warm tones or do I decorate with cool tones? And you have your, all the white samples you have and you have them chosen into or separated into piles, we're not done yet. What I want you to think about too is what kind of light source you have going into the room that you're wanting to paint. A lot of times natural light is the thing that makes whites appear brighter and artificial light doesn't. It makes it appear darker. But it's not just the natural light that does this. It is the reflective value of the paint. Okay, this is so sciencey. You guys are hanging on tight. Good job. <laughs> We're doing science 101. Okay, so there is an LRV rating for each paint color. Each paint color, not just white, but each paint color. And that LRV number is the higher it is, the more reflective it is going to be when it hits the light and opposite. So the lower that number, the darker it's going to appear. LRV stands for light reflectance value, but we can just keep it short, keep it short and sweet and simple at LRV. So that might be something to consider, but it's not necessarily something you need to know. Now, coincidentally, I had, I had no idea. My two favorite whites, they are pretty high LRV, but they are... Um, but I had no idea because I do another test and this is a test that I recommend all of you do no matter what paint color you're choosing whether it's white or whether it's purple or whether it's blue or whatever color it is I recommend you do this I recommend that you grab a sample and you paint a large large swatch on each wall in the room that you're going to be painting why would we do that you want to do that because you want to see how the light reflects that paint. You want to see what that light, the natural light, the artificial light, you want to see what that paint looks like during the morning, during the evening, during the night when you have all the lights off and just the ambient lighting. You want to see what that paint does in the room before you commit to it. So many times I've walked into homes of clients and they their paint color is it's fine. It's a fine paint color, but the homeowner will admittedly say, I bought too soon. This is not the right color. And that's often the case. So here's my, here's my little side trip here. A lot of times we hesitate in making any changes in our home. We, we just hesitate. Sometimes it's a financial hesitation. Sometimes it's a decision hesitation. Sometimes it's a time hesitation. Sometimes it is a motivation. <laughs> we hesitate. But all of a sudden, when we go to the paint store, it's like we have to rush. We have to get that job done and we have to get it done now and we have to pick the paint. Okay, what I want to encourage you to do is to take a break. Take a break, take a step back. And I want you to take a little bit of hesitation here because you want to make sure that you are choosing not only a, a color that's going to complement the things that you have ha happening in your home, but you want to make sure that you're choosing one that looks good when there's sunlight coming in and that looks good when it's nighttime. So having just a little bit of patience, you have waited so long. Think about all the, all the things that you have waited through. You've waited to save the money. You've waited to have the weekend. You've waited to just even want to do it. You've waited. You can wait one more week because what I want you to do is I want you to live with that, those paint swatches on your wall for at least three days and really study what is happening with the paint. What does it look like and what's happening as it is playing? Is it playing nicely with the colors that you have going on in the rest of the room? All right. So there are a lot of things to consider before we even choose the white, how bright it is, how reflective it is, how the natural light hits it. 
Is it a cool undertone? Is it a warm undertone? What kind of colors do you decorate throughout the rest of your home? Are they cool or warm colors? And now are you ready for it? Here are my top two. All right. I have one in each category. I have a warm white and I have a cool white. I decorate with cool colors. I love blues. I love really all shades of blues, but, but I do have some warm colors in my decorations, just not a whole lot. But for me, my very favorite cool toned white is called Bistro White. This is the white that I used on my built-in bookshelves, my built-in seating area in what's probably supposed to be the Eden kitchen that we converted. Um, I use that white. It is a pretty, it's a pretty neutral white, to be quite honest. It doesn't read a whole lot of blue. It doesn't pull a whole lot of blue as the undertone, maybe just a teeny tiny bit, but it's not so blue that it feels like it's a shade of blue. And that's, that's my cool undertone. I, I, my cool white paint. I love Bistro White from Sherwin-Williams. The other one I like is a warm white, and this one is Alabaster. I love the warmth of that color. It is, it does read pretty creamy. So this is not a white with just a teeny tiny bit of a warm undertone. It, it's kind of substantial. And, but it, it just envelops the room in warmth. And I have suggested this um, color for several clients, and it has just turned out fantastic. I have not used it in my own home I, because I choose to um, decorate in cool undertones, but I have in clients. And I'm going to put a link in, a, um, in the show notes for you to go and take a peek at a room redo we did using alabaster. And then I'll dig up a picture too so that you can see what the cool bistro white looks like as well. All right, Erica, I hope that helped you as you are trying to decide out of a million shades of white, which white is best for you. And keep in mind that you do want to look for the undertones, warm or cool. Keep in mind what you decorate with, warm or cool. Keep in mind how much bright uh, natural light you have coming into your home or artificial light. And then make sure that you take a little bit of patience and uh, paint on each wall that you want to um, paint just so you can see what it does in the light that's coming into your home so that you make the best choice for you and your home. All right. If you have a question that you want to have answered on the show, I want you to email me fig and farm at home at gmail.com. Email me there. I would love to answer your question. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Hey, real quick before you go. If you learned something new or found value in today's podcast, would you head over to iTunes to Fig and Farm at Home and leave a review and subscribe to the show? That would be awesome. And if you'd like to connect with my community of mamas who are learning to be intentional storytellers within their own homes, join us at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. There's always more room at the table. See you soon.